Ghanaians, good evening. Today, Sunday, 19th April, is exactly three weeks since I came to you and announced the imposition of restrictions to movement in the Greater Accra Metropolitan Area and Kaswa and the Greater Kumasi Metropolitan Area and its contiguous districts. I explained at the time that the decision was taken to give government the opportunity to try to contain the spread of the virus, scale up effectively the tracing of persons who had come into contact with infected persons, test them for the virus, and if necessary, quarantine and isolate them for treatment, should they prove to be positive for the virus. The decision to restrict movement has occasioned a number of severe difficulties for all of us across the country, especially for the poor and vulnerable, and not only for those resident in the affected areas. Let me express my gratitude to all of you for bearing with government, all health workers, and with members of our security services throughout this period. I requested all of us to sacrifice for our collective good, and we have been doing just that. I thank all our healthcare workers, the men and women of our security services, and members of the media for the work they've been doing in helping to combat the spread of the virus. Let me also thank the individuals and organizations who have made contributions to COVID-19 National Trust Fund. It is truly appreciated. Fellow Ghanaians, since the first two cases of infections were recorded on our shores, we have to date traced some 86,000 contacts, out of which we have test results of 68,591 contacts. There is thus a backlog of some 18,000 tests whose results are yet to be received. The overwhelming majority of these contacts have been established in the last three weeks of the partial lockdown in Accra and Kumasi. Out of this number, 1,042 persons, i.e. 1.5%, have been confirmed as positive, with 67,549 i.e. 98.5% testing negative. 99 persons have recovered and have been discharged, and 930 persons who have been isolated are responding to treatment either in their homes or in treatment facilities. These 930 persons, after their treatment, will soon undergo the mandatory two tests to determine if they have also recovered from the virus or otherwise. The main reason our country has seen an increase in the number of confirmed cases over the last three weeks is because of the decision we took aggressively to trace and test contacts of infected persons. This has enabled us to identify and isolate infected persons, protect the population from further infections, and contain better the spread of the virus. Indeed, Ghana is the only other country in Africa to have conducted more than 60,000 tests, and we are ranked number one in Africa in administering of tests per million people. The decision to impose restrictions on movement was backed by the data at hand, and our next cause of action, again, is backed by data and by science. Indeed, all that government is doing is intended to achieve five key objectives. Limit and stop the importation of the virus, contain its spread, provide adequate care for the sick, limit the impact of the virus on social and economic life, and inspire the expansion of our domestic capability and deepen our self-reliance. It is important to state at the very outset the scientists at the University of Ghana have successfully sequenced genomes of the virus responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. 
obtaining important information about the genetic composition of viral strains in 15 of the confirmed cases in Ghana. This is a significant milestone in Ghana's response to the pandemic, as it will strengthen surveillance for tracking mutations of the virus and in the tracing of the sources of community infections in people with no known contact with confirmed cases. The Ghanaian scientific community is to be warmly applauded for this advance and contribution to global knowledge. Their work makes us proud to be Ghanaians, and who knows, God may work through them to discover a vaccine. What a triumph that would be. Indeed, the recent genomic characterization of African coronaviruses by our own scientists illustrates the need to establish the enabling framework for sustaining vaccine manufacturing in Africa. We must advance African-led partnerships to drive scientific innovations for the control of viral diseases by vaccination. Ghana, recognizing this critical public health tool, will support the African Vaccine Manufacturing Initiative, which is chaired by Nogushi's Professor William Ampofu, to promote the agenda for vaccine development and manufacturing in Africa by Africans for the world. Government has also introduced the use of drones to expedite the transportation of samples to laboratory centers. On Friday, 17th April, for example, 51 samples were delivered from the Ominako Drone Distribution Center to Noguchi. Furthermore, we're introducing rapid results testing to augment our surveillance and enhance contact tracing efforts so that we can quickly isolate and treat confirmed cases. From the 68,591 samples tested, we've been able to understand better the dynamism of the virus, mapped out its geographic footprint, and established current and potential hotspots. We've also been able to isolate and educate asymptomatic carriers and thereby help minimize the spread of the virus. So far, it has been established that the virus was imported into our midst from foreign shores and is being spread through person-to-person -person contact. The majority of persons infected in Ghana have mild to no symptoms at all whilst a very small number have required hospital treatment, of which nine persons with underlying ailments have died. Towards treatment, we've expanded and added to our network of COVID-19 treatment centers, with the Ghana East and Bank of Ghana hospitals being 100% dedicated to the fight. In addition, we have set aside separate COVID-19 treatment centers at the University of Ghana Medical School Hospital, the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital, Kumasi South Hospital, and in other designated regional and district hospitals. Last Friday, I was honored to do the virtual salt cutting ceremony for the construction of our 100-bed infectious disease and isolation facility at the Ghana East Municipal Hospital, which is being funded through a public-private partnership under the leadership of the Ghana COVID-19 Private Sector Fund, and whose construction, with the assistance of the 48th Engineer Regiment of the Ghana Armed Forces, will be completed in six weeks. Members of the Private Sector Fund have indeed acted like citizens and not spectators in these testing times for our country. And their patriotism is to be loudly praised. We have also scaled up the domestic production of personal protective equipment. And our health care facilities so far have taken delivery of 14,550 scrubs, 11,900 gowns, 19,980 head covers, 263,281 nose marks, 
13,002 N95 nose masks, 41,117 varying sizes of sanitizers have also been produced locally and delivered to our health facilities. The enhancement of our capacity to test has been made possible by the dedication of the expanded teams at Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research, and the National Public Health Reference Laboratory. Further, we're making significant investments in the laboratories of the Veterinary Laboratory, Accra, the Center for Scientific and Industrial Research Laboratory in Accra, the Police Hospital, the 37 Military Hospital, the University of Health and Allied Sciences in Ho, the Veterinary Services Department in Sekundi Takradi, the Public Health Laboratory in Tamale, the War Memorial Hospital in Navrongo, and the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, so they can also use PCR technology. We are recalibrating 100 regional and district tuberculosis gene expert laboratories across the country to help ensure that we have a minimum situation of one testing center per region. Fellow Ghanaians, in view of our ability to undertake aggressive contact tracing of infected persons, the enhancement of our capacity to test, the expansion in the numbers of our treatment and isolation centers, our better understanding of the dynamism of the virus, the ramping up of our domestic capacity to, to produce our own personal protective equipment, sanitizers and medicine. The modest success is chalked in containing the spread of the virus in Accra and Kumasi, and the severe impact on the poor and vulnerable. I've taken the decision to lift the three week old restriction on movements in the greater Accra metropolitan area and Kaswa and the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and its contiguous districts. With effect from 1 a.m. on Monday, 20th April. In effect, tomorrow, we'll see the partial lockdown in Accra and Kumasi being lifted. I must make it clear at the outset that lifting these restrictions does not mean we're letting our guard down. All other measures are still firmly in place for the avoidance of doubt. The earlier measures announced on Wednesday, 15th March, which have been extended, are still very much in force and have not been relaxed. I'm demanding even greater adherence to these measures. In here, I'm referring to the suspension of all public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities, and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, are to remain closed. Businesses and other workplaces can continue to operate, observing staff management and workplace protocols with a view to achieving social distancing and hygiene protocols. Operators of public transport including our buses, trotters, and taxis, are to continue to run with a minimum number of passengers as they have been doing for the last three weeks in maintaining social distancing. They must also continue to ensure the maintenance of enhanced hygienic conditions in all vehicles and terminals by providing, amongst others, hand sanitizers, running water, and soap for washing of hands. Domestic airlines, are required to adhere to the same protocol. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, together with Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies, will continue to implement measures to enhance conditions of hygiene in markets across the country and expand the policy of alternate days for alternative products to improve social distancing in all markets. As has been established, the overwhelming majority of confirmed cases have come from travelers or from people who have come into contact with travelers. 
It is therefore incumbent on us to continue to be vigilant about travelers into our country until further notice and to congratulate the men and women of the Immigration Service and the Marine Police Unit for their work in securing our borders. The arrest of 10 West African nationals in Tamale, who all tested positive for the virus. The arrest of the six Nigerian travelers who entered Ghana through unapproved routes along the Ghana-Togo border near Aflao, who also tested positive for the virus. And the recent arrest of 10 fishermen in the western region who returned from Côte d'Ivoire and have been quarantined, testify to the determination of our security services to protect our borders. I have thus signed an executive instrument to extend the closure of our borders for two four more weeks, beginning Monday, the 20th of April. Like the World Health Organization, WHO, has recently advised, I want to encourage you to wear a mask wherever you go, as it will help you not to contract the virus and keep it clean. If you own a business or are providing a service, i.e. a barber, a hairdresser, a tailor, a taxi driver, a trot road driver, and his mate, a shopkeeper, a food seller, please do well to use a mask. The Minister of Health, will very soon issue guidelines on face masks for public use. I entreat religious, traditional, community, and opinion leaders to partner with government in engaging, mobilizing, and enforcing adherence to social distancing and personal hygiene protocol practices in their respective communities. As difficult as it may be, I encourage all bereaved persons to conduct private burials of their loved ones, but ensure that the 25 personal limit is not breached. Indeed, some are burying their loved ones now in order to have the final funeral rites later. The morgues in the country are becoming full and will in themselves soon pose a public health hazard. So let us act quickly on this. As the day goes by, and as we continue to sustain a grip on the rapid spread of the virus, the systematic easing of these restrictions will be undertaken to bring life back to normalcy. Definitely, we will continue to record new cases of infections, particularly with our policy of aggressive tracing and testing. However, I want to assure you the government has put in place the appropriate measures to isolate and treat them. Should there be an unexpected outburst in infections within a community, I have put the health workers and the security services, including the police service and the armed forces, on standby to coordinate a rapid response of human and logistical resources if necessary to cordon, impose a curfew, trace, test, and treat infected persons in the affected community. Indeed, the focus of government's policy and action will be based on the implementation of the three T's, i.e. tracing, testing, and treating. In any event, stay at home unless it is absolutely essential. The movement of foodstuffs will continue from producing areas to the markets, and with the intervention of the Metropolitan Municipal and District Assemblies, the markets will be better organized for the sale of foodstuffs. Fellow Ghanaians, as we fight to halt the spread of the virus, we are also engaged in fights on two other fronts, fights we must equally win. Firstly, there continues to be the deliberate dissemination of fake news, disinformation, and outright lies by some unpatriotic citizens about the spread of the virus since its outbreak in the country. These acts are being orchestrated by those who seek to benefit by seeking to sow the seeds of panic and confusion amongst the populace 
at this time of national crisis. I have an unequivocal, unambiguous message for those involved in these despicable acts. Put an immediate stop to it or be held accountable for your actions. Secondly, as been aptly stated by the Ghana Medical Association, being infected by the coronavirus is not necessarily a death sentence. I've noticed with great concern the stories of some persons who have recovered from the virus now being confronted with another problem, i.e. stigmatization. This is not right, as it will rather drive away people from getting screened, tested, and treated. The stigmatization of recovered persons must stop, because if the virus did not end their lives and livelihoods, the stigma from members of their communities should not. I know the effects of the measures to contain the virus have been difficult for many, and that is why I mandated the creation of the 1.2 billion CD Coronavirus Alleviation Pro Program to support households and businesses. Out of this amount, 280 million CDs is being used to provide food for the vulnerable and free water for all Ghanaians for three months, i.e. April, May, and June. 323 million CDs is being used to motivate our health workers. And 600 million CDs of assistance is being provided to micro, small, and medium-scale businesses. I expect disbursements of the 600 million CDs to start in May. Government is fully absorbing electricity bills for one million active lifeline customers and is granting a 50% subsidy on electricity bills of all other customers using their March 2020 bill as their benchmark for the months of April, May, and June. In total, the relief on electricity will amount to some one billion CDs. Again, government through the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development, and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture through the National Buck Buffer Stock Company, in collaboration with the MMDCs and the District Disaster Management Committees, has provided over two and a half million cooked food packs to vulnerable persons in the affected districts of Accra and Kumasi. Dry food packs have also been distributed in collaboration with the faith-based organization to 450,000 families in the same areas as against the original target of 400,000. I express my profound gratitude to the private sector and faith-based organizations and traditional authorities for their support in this endeavor. I also commend highly the many individuals and private organizations who on their own organized hot meals and fed a number of vulnerable people within the restricted areas. To these individuals, I call for being good neighbors to your fellow Ghanaians. As we continue to battle this pandemic, it is imperative we plan to restore Ghana onto a sound economic footing and create a path towards growth and transformation. The recent one billion United States dollar rapid credit facility, secured from the IMF without any precondition and approved by parliament, will be used to help close the financing gap that has been created by the pandemic through shortfalls in revenues and additional expenditures. I welcome the three billion CD credit and stimulus package from the commercial banks with the support of the Bank of Ghana to revitalize industries, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service, and manufacturing sectors. The Minister for Finance, that hardworking, outstanding national treasurer, together with his counterpart in South Africa, as co-chairs of the Committee of African Finance Ministers, have been leading a pan-African effort to bring debt relief to the continent in these difficult times. 
the recent one billion United States dollar rapid credit facility, secured from the IMF without any precondition and approved by Parliament, will be used to help close the financing gap that has been created by the pandemic through shortfalls in revenues and additional expenditures. I welcome the three billion CD credit and stimulus package from the commercial banks with the support of the Bank of Ghana to revitalize industries, especially in the pharmaceutical, hospitality, service, and manufacturing sectors. The Minister for Finance, that hardworking, outstanding national treasurer, together with his counterpart in South Africa, as co-chairs of the Committee of African Finance Ministers, have been leading a pan-African effort to bring debt relief to the continent in these difficult times. Last Friday, they achieved a nine-month debt standstill from the World Bank for all qualifying members of the International Development Association, IDA, starting from 1st May 2020, totaling some 44 billion United States dollars for the countries of Africa. In the case of Ghana, this amounts to a freeze in principal and interest payments for the year, amounting to some 500 million United States dollars. This will create greater fiscal space to help make the Ghanaian economy much more resilient. I've charged the finance minister to leave no stone unturned to achieve an even greater and comprehensive debt relief program for Africa. Our success in defeating the virus is largely within our control. That means each and every one of us must exercise at all times during this period without the partial lockdown in Accra and Kumasi, a strong sense of selflessness, self-control, and self-discipline. It is important to stress strongly that coming out of the partial lockdown in Accra and Kumasi does not mean we are out of the pandemic. We will continue to monitor closely events in some hotspots in the greater Accra metropolitan area like Wejagbawe, Ga East and Ayawasu East municipalities and Tema metropolis and in the eastern region like Esuijamai and Lower Manya Krobo districts. Whenever the situation so warrants, a community in which the virus is identified as becoming prevalent will be locked down until there is a clear understanding of the trajectory of the virus that will allow us to contain it. We must obey the measures still in place, including the new ones, because we know our survival depends on them. And the harder we are on ourselves in obeying them, the quicker and more enduring will be the victory. To Ghanaians in all parts of the world, I urge you to remain steadfast in abiding by the rules and regulations that have been put in place by your host countries to combat the virus. And I extend the, the condolences of all your compatriots at home to all families abroad who have lost their loved ones to the virus. And I take this opportunity to wish our High Commissioner to the United Kingdom and Ireland, my good friend, Papa Usuan Kuma, who has been affected by the virus, and other Ghanaians abroad, who have been so affected, a speedy recovery. This disease is new, and it is in plain evolution, and there is therefore, as yet, no vaccine or cure. But we know enough to take action, and we shall be nimble and adapt as the situation changes. We will tailor our solutions to our unique social, economic, and cultural conditions. There is no one-size-fits-all approach, but I pledge to you, the government will do whatever is required in our particular circumstances to safeguard the lives of our people and keep our economy going. Discipline, self-discipline, is that strong bridge that all of us, from the safety of our homes in our workplaces and in our communities, must build. We need to build a strong bridge 
of self-discipline in order for us to cross over from this difficult period of restrictions and the spread of the coronavirus to the other side where total freedom to go about our normal lives awaits us. To defeat the virus and get there, we have to accept that we have to wash our hands, maintain good hygiene, refrain from shaking hands, wear our masks, and practice social discipline in all of our engagements. Fellow Ghanaians, we are confronting one of the greatest challenges of our generation. We have to win this battle. We have to defeat the virus. It is our behavior and response that will determine that. I have every confidence that collectively, we Ghanaians have it in us to rise to the occasion and become victorious. I'm very grateful for the great support you have given my government and I as we steer our country out of this crisis. Continue in unity to provide that support. This too shall pass, for the battle is the Lord's. May God bless us all and our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention and have a good night.